In the broadcast industry, there are voices that linger forever. Guys like Paul Harvey, Casey Kasem, Bruce Morrow, Vin Scully, and in Detroit, Dick Purton. Dick began his career in his hometown of Buffalo, but quickly moved on to work at other stations in New York and Maryland. But it was in Detroit where Dick found a home. He started as a disc jockey for WKNR in 1965. His quick wit and fresh sense of humor made him a top personality at WXYZ, CKLW, and WCZY-FM, which subsequently became WKQI. After 13 years at WKQI, he transitioned to WOMC, and it was there that his show, Purton's People, became Detroit's top-rated morning program. Dick was inducted into both the National Radio Hall of Fame and the National Broadcasters Hall of Fame. But it is for his work in charity that we are recognizing him tonight. Dick was instrumental in establishing the very first 16-hour Dick Purton Radiothon, which evolved into the Salvation Army Bed and Bread Club Radiothon. Purton continued this tradition until his retirement in 2010. Over the span of 24 years, these radiothons have raised over $25 million. The monies raised help feed more than 1.8 million persons and shelter almost 150,000 people annually. More than 5,000 meals are prov provided daily to children, adults, and seniors by the Salvation Army Bed and Bread Program which serves the Metro Detroit area's most depressed areas every day of the year. Purton's dedicated service is further evidenced by a variety of charitable efforts and related honors. As a 30-year member of the Board of Directors for the Children's Hospital of Michigan, he raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to benefit that pediatric facility. Both he and his loving wife, Gail, were recipients of the McCarty Cancer Foundation's 2003 Humanitarian of the Year Award for their contributions to cancer research. Utilizing Dick's media exposure, the Pertons dramatically increased the level of public awareness regarding ovarian cancer and provided over $2 million for the Gail Perton Ovarian Cancer Research Fund at the Carmanos Cancer Center and the Perton Family Ovarian Cancer Research Foundation. This guy is for real folks. It is with great pleasure that I announce the recipient of this year's Exercising Compassion Award to Dick Purton. Thank you. It's obvious like they're hearing that I can't hold a job. I have uh, I've been around, apparently, and uh, thank you. Um, Santa Claus, uh, if my grandkids, we have eight uh, grandchildren, if, if they were here tonight, a lot of them are very young, including a year and a half year old, 10, 8, et cetera, th they would uh, think they died and went to heaven seeing you guys. <laughs> and also they'd be very, very confused. <laughs> it's a lot of Santa Clauses. But uh, anyway, anyway, it is uh, very nice to be here. By the way, you guys requested, uh, what was the song by the Drifters? Uh, Under the Boardwalk, right? Didn't you think they were going to request Up on the Roof? <laughs> I mean, that's the, the same group that does that song. Yeah. Okay, anyway, I thought so. We'll do that. You, okay, right. we'll do that later. Okay, thank you. Anyway, uh, it was a wonderful dinner. Did you enjoy the dinner? I did. Amazing to uh, have 300 uh, people together. We all ordered the same things. <laughs> Beef, pork, and uh, ravioli. Very good. Thank you, Father Joe. Uh, this is a Byzantine Catholic church. I am not that familiar with that, uh, you know, the Byzantine uh, part of it all. But I understand the priests, uh, some are married. Father Joe is married. And I met uh, Father Lawrence in the back who is married, which is a good thing, I think, because uh, then they'd be able to describe hell a little more so than the non-married <laughs> priests. <clears throat> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Look at these, these guys who are batching it tonight, laughing. <laughs> Mrs. Claus, most of them are out of town. I know. I know what's going on. Anyway, 
Um, but talking to Father uh, Joseph about it and getting a little information, he told me that uh, the church is open to all denominations, uh, tens, twenties, fifties. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. So, and by the way, um, I ran into a fellow. Yes, Father Joe. Oh, ran into a fellow in the back here, Joe Kitts. Uh, when I was talking to Father Lawrence in the back, and uh, Joe Kitts and Gladys. Uh, have six children and 31 grandchildren. So, with Christmas uh, about two months away, there will be a collection taken up <laughs> for the Kitts family a little later on. Santa Claus is certainly coming come in, uh, earlier this year for, for all of us, I guess. I must tell you, though, I stopped believing in Santa Claus. Uh, my mother and dad uh, took me aside and told me about it, and I remember crying about it and then thinking to myself, Dick, you're 18 years old, you should, <laughs> you know, grow up, these things do, do happen. But I actually stopped believing in Santa when I started getting clothes for Christmas. That, that, was, that was the killer. But anyway, I did wear uh, a Santa suit uh, for my family occasionally, not every year, but a lot of them I did. Uh, I also played the Easter Bunny with, a, with an Easter Bunny suit. And uh, so I, I felt I was doing my part. We had a, we had a fun, fun time. Uh, we have six children, eight grandchildren, but six children. They're all girls, all of them. God knows I tried. <laughs> but, uh, and so did Gail. In fact, uh, my charming wife, Gail, here, stand up, darling, and uh, thank you. I mean, six, you know, is, it's, it's quite an achievement, let's face it. Six, six, six daughters. And when you think about it, that really, honestly, it took Gail you know, 54 months took me about six minutes. So consequently, <laughs> this is the one that should be getting the award tonight. I don't know why I'm getting this compassion award, or at least in a passion award. But anyway, we do have uh, six lovely daughters, and we've paid for seven lovely weddings, I can assure you. <laughs> Might be eight, come to think of it, I'm not sure. But anyway, my, uh, finally, my, uh, my dad, uh, I learned the Santa thing and playing Santa from my dad. He did the same thing. Uh, for myself and for my two sisters. And uh, then, of course, the grandchildren came along, and he continued to do that. Well, my dad died just a few years ago uh, at the age of 96. So he was a character, a real honest-to-God character. And I remember on the last time he did play Santa, he said to me just out of the blue, he said, Dick, are you thinking of retiring? And I said, no, no not, not particularly. No, I don't think so. Why? He said, well, because I don't uh, want you to move back in with me. So, anyway, uh, yeah. I haven't done it. Anyway, uh, through my profession, I've had the opportunity to uh, take some causes that I believed in and give them a face, give them a voice. And that was a, kind of a neat thing to do because uh, a whole bunch of people responded. And we are now um, up to about almost $30 million on the Radiothon. Uh, well, it just shows you, thank you. I, I know you're applauding, but and it, it, you know the applause goes to all the folks out there in this very, very giving community. I mean, we've proven, if only with our charity, we've proven how giving this community is, and it truly is. And I remember the words I wrote it down of Winston Churchill, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. Thank you very, very much.